Okay, the, today I'm going to talk about this, uh, how the technology will impact to the industry. And th this is a part of what I have done during 2015 to 2020. I had a lot of experience on this subject because I visited many pharmaceutical plants. So I, get, I gathered a lot of experience and also I implemented some of them, but still I see there are some more, more things to go ahead. And we can discuss with you how these things can be implemented in, in industry and how the how these technological advance advancement we can we can get into the academic field as well and how we we can get this knowledge to the industry my firstly i will briefly introduce about my experience and the plant what i did i will give you a brief, brief video about this the brief introduction about myself, I did my uh, bachelor in Sri Lanka and my master degree and PhD from University of Bremen, where you are now. And I work as a research scientist from 2005 to 2012 in two universities, University of Bremen and University of Technical University of Hamburg. So we did industrial project uh, all the time, about seven years, seven, eight years, Siemens, and then later it is Nokia Siemens Networks. Then I shifted to Sri Lanka in 2012 and worked as a senior lecturer and also held several positions, administrative positions like head of the department and the faculty of engineering. During this time, I, uh, in 2016, I left the academic field and go to the industry. So the basic idea is uh, I want to, my brother want to, want to develop a pharmaceutical uh, sector and by implementing manufacturing plant and he want to make it from the beginning so I took this opportunity and I started I co-founded this uh, BOI approved pharmaceutical and cosmeceutical manufacturing formulation plant and this already functioning right now and uh, we'll see how it's look like and then I work also several other companies within the group as a CEO and the director of the companies now I left the company all the group and again, come back to academic field. So you can see some of the activities that I have done to implement this pharmaceutical plant. So we'll see a small video for five minutes and you get some idea about this. Since the country has more than a 700 billion annual demand for the pharmaceutical sectors and more than a 400 billion cosmeceutical demand, a visionary decision was taken by the management to set up a high quality technological and modern BOI approved manufacturing facility called Ace Healthcare Private Limited in Horana, Sri Lanka. With the innovative knowledge of CEO of the Alaris Group, Dr. Engineer Tushar Abir Wardana, who is a graduate from the University of Moratua, it was designed to comply with WHO, CGMP, USFDA, and EU GMP standards with ISO and green certification to cater to both local and international market demands. The strategical decision to invest US dollars 28 million was made to recover the country's economic backdrop by preserving the outgoing local reserves and gaining foreign currency through the development of export markets. Further, the new manufacturing plant creates more than 300 direct employment opportunities and more than 500 indirect job opportunities for our citizens. From the design perspective, the plant will cater to prime requirements of avoiding contamination of personal and facility developments. Manufacturing plant is isolated from service platforms such as administrative, cafeterias, security and visiting staff centers, power distribution systems and all utilities. Therefore, many contaminations due to personal, administrative and material movement are avoided by the design itself. Modern, modularized, and zone-based clean room design eliminates the airborne microbes such as bacteria, virus, and many airborne funguses. The formulation plant is to be included with high technological and automated machineries, technologically advanced protective security systems, advanced quality control laboratories, research and development laboratories, and the microbiology laboratory 
in order to eliminate high quality manufacturing, processing and product landforms which are in conformance with international standards and guidelines. The project is developed under three distinctive phases which creates stepwise marketing deployments and catering to the distinctive and volatile marketing challenges. Phase 1 Herbal, Cosmetic and Ayurvedic Plant Development Phase 2 Pharmaceutical, Oral and Liquid Solids and Dermatology Plant Development Phase 3 Cosmeceuticals and Nutraceuticals Plant Development The first phase of the project, the development of Ayurveda and Herbal Cosmetics is currently under operation by providing herbal and Ayurvedic cosmetic products to the national and international markets. The commercial production was commenced from July 2019, and so far, more than 230 million sales revenue are earned by ACE by successfully deploying the two brands, Lea and Offmark Pro Beauty Export Exhibition, to be held in Ukraine. Phase 2, Pharmaceutical, Oral and Liquid Solids and Dermatology Plant Development. In this facility, we will be able to make all types of general formulations like anti-diabetic, anti-histamine, anti-allergic, anti-pyrotic, anti-inflammatory, statins, anti-hypertensive, non-steroid anti-inflammatory drugs, multivitamins, antifungal, liquids, suspensions, antacids, iron preparations, enzymes, multivitamins, non-aqueous liquids, pediatric drops. Dermatology preparations include ointments, creams, and gel manufacturing. With a bulk capacity of 500 kilograms, we are able to manufacture a wide range of antibacterial, anti-burn, anti-allergic, anti-infection formulations. To provide green energy to the manufacturing plant, a 150 kilowatt solar power system is installed in the rooftop of the plant. The manufacturing plant strictly complies to lead green certification guidelines to be committed to the eco-friendly practices of worldwide trends and goals to minimize the impact of carbon footprint on the environment. This affluent treatment plant is designed to reuse 100% of the wastewater generated by the formulation plant. It is a biological grade plant with zero discharge so that no waste is discharged to the environment and high quality purified water is used for all factory activities. The current reuse water capacity is more than 15,000 liters per day. The treatment plant has the approval of the Environmental Authority. An incinerator is operated at 1,200 centigrade to destroy the solid waste from the factory. So that's about the factory that I have built during, I think it took nearly three years to build complete plan. And um, it is uh, running uh, pharmaceutical and also cosmeceutical plants. And now it is extended into the, the nutraceutical plants. So the issue was that the, this COVID situation we had to face and there are many challenges with that and uh, the working staff and all this, therefore schedule a little bit, bit longer. But anyway, the things are fine and doing well at the moment. So today I, I try to get this experience and discuss with you and how the technology, uh, industry and technology initiatives. So if we start from the beginning at the, uh, at the very early days, we had the around 18th century, uh, we had the, before 18th century, we had the agricultural systems. So people, manpower and wind power and water power people used, but uh, at the end of uh, 18th century that we had the industrial revolution actually. And this basically they use uh, the main invention of steam power. Still steam power is used for many applications. This is steam engine uh, with this, the industry uh, vastly changed and the mechanization process started. And the process, the, the localized and village area 
area, area productions comes to the cities and the, the mechanization is started at heavily and, and the productivity improves. Then the technological advancement came into the picture with the, the, the you know, invention of electricity because uh, mass production and assembly, assembly lines, they started and still the production, production get very fast and faster and also cost uh, labor, labor content basically produced uh, because early days we had the problem with, with the labor amount of labor that we use mainly for Europe, this is the main problem. That's why these uh, the the industrial revolution came to the pictures, and then the technological revolution comes in. Then further, this labor content reduced. Then after around uh, 20th century and the middle, we had this uh, automation came into the picture with the computer-driven and IT-based robotics, and they use the automatize the many processes of that we are doing. But we will discuss this industry 3.0 and then how we move into the industry 4.0 from the 2015 onwards. We effectively get into this cyber physical systems and the IoT systems and uh, AI driven many applications we use. Early century, last century, we use uh, fuel as the main, main uh, force, but now we are using data as the main, main ingredient that's kind of DNA of the, this new industry platform. So uh, process-wise, uh, industry 3.0, mass customization happening, now personalization. We are going individual uh, production lines for the cater the demands of the people. So with this, I, now I want to show you the picture about complete enterprise. And I categorize this into the way that I want to act want to explain you in major categories. One part is the CRM part, customer relationship and management. This is totally the marketing sales and customer oriented processes. And this completely now handling online and most, most of the marketing and sales is coming under online on a lot of demands varying and the, the sales staff and customer handling mostly digital, the digital plat platforms are being used. Then if you see the other side, from the raw material to the, the final product, that uh, uh, the supply chain management, you, when you start for any manufacturing facility, you have to collect the raw material from different vendors from different countries. And the, the, of course, the demand varies depending on that you have to get the, the required raw material on time. So varying supply chain uh, and also varying demand, we have to manage effectively in order to have a good production output. So these are the two ends that we have from the raw material to the, the manufacturing plant to the finished product and uh, to the customer. Then we also have ERP systems. This is basically I categorize because for small, uh, small size enterprises, we have ERP and together with these functions, but the large enterprises, they have the more, more depth analysis with individual parts. So ERP system basically handles the finance and all the oh, business intelligent parts and all the scheduling and all back office functions. But all these, uh, all these ERP, CRM and, and supply chain, all these supporting but the main function is happening at the manufacturing or production facility of in the, within the factory. So we are focusing on this factory, factory, how we can effectively produce high quality products using technology. That is the main part we are looking at. So this is the, the categorization, but of course, depending on the, 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 the enterprise size of the enterprise, this can be, a, can be combined together and we can make it, but anyway, manufacturing, we can take as separate. So I categorize this again, this manufacturing into two parts, basically, where exactly the manufacturing processes with this, the uh, second part and the, the supporting part, CRM, CR mean customer relationship management sales and all this part, and the supply chain management with the ERP systems, this, and then the invoicing and, and this functionality together. But if you take this manufacturing area that we are starting with manufacturing execution systems, 
And then we have this manufacturing execution system basically starting from the raw material from the manufacturing plant to the finished product you have to manage complete process. So this management has to be done each and every level, quality testing, and also the, the warehouse management as well. So when you come to the SCADA and DCS, SCADA systems mean supervisory control and data acquisitions. You may have several plants together within the factory. So several within the plant, you have several processes running. Basically for the pharmaceutical industry, you have several processes running together. So you, in order to monitor them, you have to have a supervisory control and data acquisition systems. And this on top of PLC, several PS, PLC mean programmable logic controller and uh, together with uh, HMI, that uh, it, it provide the control functionality for the field devices and all the machineries and, uh, and these sensors, actuators and edge devices, this is really the shop flow or, or we can say factory flow. We have all the machineries, all the sensors and based on sensors means that uh, you have a physical changes you have to make into the transform into the electrical signal and and based on that you have you have to control the set values and based on the programming uh, that you are setting up for the particular process functionality you make the actuator to control the flow levels and all the all the controlling functionality for that so these these all the machineries in pharmaceutical sector as well as in all other industries mainly control via the PLCs. And then it goes to the SCADA system. These distributed control systems previously, uh, they have used together with, in order to having PLC, this they are together, uh, several P PLC platform together concentrated and they make uh, vendor specific distributed systems. But nowadays people going for the IP based SCADA systems that they can control all the PLC each and every single processes separately. And that is required to have a more modularized approach for the, for the processes and in order to control them effectively. So WMS is warehouse management system. This is another, another area that you have to, you have to effectively manage that you have to once the production output is there, you have to distribute it immediately to the, the, the according to the demands and to the, the customers. And so the shipping and transport transportation for the overseas and then the then the invoicing and all other cash-based functions. So all these together will make a complete industrial system model. But what I have observed during uh, during my my observation and visiting. So people are more reluctant to invest money on this real work rather than they, they like to spend more money on ERP, especially in Sri Lanka or any other country, they tend to go for, for, for investing seven, seven figure value for the ERP systems and all other systems, but real work is happening in the industry. They, they lastly go for MES systems, manufacturing execution systems to be implemented or SCADA systems but they are always having with the PLC and the actuators, they are functioned on this. So, however, the, the concentration should be done on this because these are the main production area and how we can use this automation uh, and more effectively how we can do this, uh, the manufacturing process that we are going to discuss. Prior to this, that now we have some idea about manufacturing and how, this, how, the, how the systems are being categorized. So just start with the, 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 the manufacturing process. They have, they have started with the International Society of Automation and 95 standard. This provides the basic, like our seven layer architecture. This is the basic layered architecture that they are providing that every, every automation industry should follow this, this layers based architecture. Architecture and integration happens at each level based on these categorizations. At the, the lowest part, at the field level, as we have discussed, we have sensors, machineries, motors, and all these, all these equipment that, uh, that, mo that monitor and control the, control the flow processes in order to have a better output. So this is done with the, the control level with the PLC, PLC or programmable uh, logic controller or programmable automation controller. 
And this, uh, the, this has uh, each and every process you can program and based on their, their input and output, the, the, the system uh, getting the, the sensors providing the input and based on that, the, the actuators control the flow level to, to keep the required level in, in uh, proper conditions. For example, uh, in pharmaceutical systems, we have to keep uh, temperature, humidity, and all the level sensors, and all this input has to be properly controlled in order to get the flow rates of each and every vessels. And, and also, the, also the environment, the particle levels we need to monitor, and, and we have to control them depending on the filters opening and uh, uh, activating the filters. So these all the system, if you take each and every plant, normally we have eight plant in our systems. Each plant, we have separate uh, SCADA systems and all together we can monitor with the, with the, with the supervisory control and data acquisitions. And we can, we can see how the complete processes within the plant, how they are running. So when you have all these plants together, manufacturing execution systems, but, but the main idea is that to control from incoming raw material to the finished product. So this case that you have to monitor, you have to do all the human management as well as testing and quality approach and everything should be monitored and should provide the correct functionality. Then the business, business intelligence basically happening with the ERP level that the scheduling uh, scheduling, and also your financial matters will be handled. These are the basic architecture that IS, ISA 95 pride for the automation the industry 3.0. But the main issue of this model that each and every level, if you take a PLC, we have very good um, PLC engineers. They, they do very well but they are not coordinating with other processes. They are not all the each and every level, they work properly, but the between layers, they are not coordinating well. So they are for total output as a, the MES total overall performance when you look into that, that we had uh, many challenges, how to incorporate these each and every working good models together and incorporate them. And in order to have this, there should be a change of handling data. There, there should be a real-time data handling we should take into the picture. So I will show you one example of our site. And, and also I draw this, uh, the, the, how this uh, shop flow to a SCADA system, how it works. So we have many, many steam valves. We have temperature sensors. Based on that, you control the valve. Uh, the, and then also that you have the pressure sensors, then based on that, you are, you are controlling the motors. So this is done at the, these are the feed level devices and the PLC level, each, each and every process, each and every process, you can, you can have different control, different PLC controls. And all together, you can get into the one system that the supervisory control systems, that the real time data you can see, and also you can analyze the past data how the things are being changing. So, so based on this, you can, you can have some overall picture and then you can act quickly for these three layers. The, on the other hand, if you look into that, this PID controller, part of the PLC controllers, the PID controller, they have set up variable like, like crucial control, for example, our vehicle. So they have set up a speed we set. So based on that, it runs. So for industry, basically the temperature handling is done with the PID controllers. And this, because of temperature sensor, you have, to, you have to control the input flow and mixing flows very well uh, in order to have a good, uh, good production line. So this is done by this PID control. All these controllers can get it to a one place and look into that, that is the supervisory control and data acquisition systems. This is the level three model. So this, what exactly happening happening in the industry, but the MES level, this kind of plant or this kind of processes, you have many processes. The part of the, part of the production is, uh, is doing by one process and the second part, the second plant, third plant, likewise plant-wise also you have to make it. Today's there might, you may have uh, several factories. So when you have online demands, it's daily varying. So you have distributed them 
that this kind of thing is not possible in the systems because you have to do whole data from all layers within one place. This is the main idea of coming with the industry four. So prior to going to the industry four, first we will understand exactly when I also looking into this manufacturing, it was very, very challenging what exactly happening, happening in the manufacturing and what is changing over the years and what is common from the principle wise. So if I ask you, so what is common in, in manufacturing in all the platform, all the, all the years, there is some common things. These are the principles of manufacturing normally, principal areas. So what are the common things? On the other hand, what are the different things coming from the years and generation to generations, generation and industry 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, what is happening? What is and what we are achieving? So, so mainly the, the what is common is that, that, that there is a raw material coming and it, it flow through the process, varying processes, and you will get the production output. You will get the product. This is common for any factory, for any age. It, it's, it's for each and every generation. If you take this material flow through varying processes and systems, this is common as a platform that you have the raw material, you have the several processes and how effectively you are doing this is the challenge. And, and that's what we are changing for, for, for generation to generation. So what is changing? We change the technology. So, so based on technology, you can cut down the labor content, you can cut down the cost, you can, you can make faster and also flexible. So, so this, these processes, nowadays, the, the after automation means each and every level, without much human interventions, the processes can be run alone and also based on that, the requirement has to be posted. So nowadays the connectivity and intelligence came into the picture and the things are more for new factories. New factories, they, they, are, they are going for these integration perspectives of processes. And these are the key things that we, when we categorize the, the manufacturing as a whole, that we see the main differences. So basically this flow and, flow and variations through the processes and through the plants or, or based on the, the supply, supply, that means supply chain itself uncertain. You have, so for, for one pharmaceutical product may have, may, may, may require 20 materials, some five, six, more than five, more, more or what's more, most of the cases. So the supplier, suppliers might be coming from different countries. So supplier, the varying their, their available stocks and their supply, depending on the demand, because today demand is highly variable. So morning you have the, when you see the internet orders, for example, you have so many orders by the end of the day. So you have to plan newly. So demand and based on that, your supply chain has to be managed. So these, these flow and variation processes has to be done based on few success factors that driven by basically you have to have a quality. You cannot increase the rate if you have many, many, many bad uh, production outputs coming. So you have to keep the quality. Quality is the kind of value propositions people look into that. And then the speed, can we, can we able to do the demand? So cost, one of the main, main factors today that uh, can we make the profit out of this? And also flexibility, can we, can we change with the demand? Can, can, depending on the daily demand, so how we manage this with the different different factories even, different different processes even, different different availability of raw material and finished products, how the human has to be managed. All this together, if you, when you have a varying demand, you are facing all these challenges and how we can face for this. This is the main challenge from the manufacturing point of view, how we can address this. So basically, if you see all these years, what is the key changes, productivity changes heavily because the then labor content vastly change and cost reduced and also speed increases. All these factors within one law 1965, there's a one, the Moore's law that, that is still true, but 
we have to think about this because a uh, number of transistors initially it is a number of transist transistors within a chip every two years double that means size of the the the, the computers size of the electronics devices drastically reduced and based on that you the you get a high speed high high increase you you faster processing right rapid change in information processing happening and due to this, the, the cost reductions, your, your efficiency will go high and the cost reduction is, is one of the key aspects. So when you look at the, look at the complete uh, the industry manufacturing plants, so we have to think, okay, now I have a good understanding about the manufacturing and what should be done, how things has to be managed. So where is, how to improve, what to improve, and where is the place and how. If you take total factory or total uh, system that uh, the manufacturing plant, you have overall equipment efficiency. This is based on the quality, availability, and performance. That quality means that uh, when you, how many rejects, what is the percentage of quality products you are getting? It may be nice. This is a high value, this quality is normally for any any schedule system. We, we first schedule the systems. Within that schedule time period, the quality is about 90, 95, more than 95%. But when you, when you speed up, it might be quality get degraded. So availability means that you have to, all the machineries and plants should be available throughout the schedule time. And this, there might be a unplanned breakdowns or, or setup adjustment this can delay your productions. So this is another, another key factors that you have to look into that availability and the performance, availability and performance, they are also in, impacting one another. Performance mean that the completely the, the operator and also the, the machineries uh, that how process all the processes we can uh, run based on our specification or schedule plan. So all these three factors together, we will get a get a overall equipment efficiency. This is for the scheduled scheduled systems. You plan for this. In Sri Lanka, this overall equipment efficiency, I have seen many industries and their their output and their analysis, and they it's around fifty percent. There's a huge room that another fifty percent to be improved if you if you can manage this properly. This that's why this industry four point zero is much more important if you can give the information at right time at right place and, and and the knowledge worker that you can improve this overall equipment efficiency to the high value but as a whole when you when you think as a ceo or as an entrepreneur that you also look into that what is the over, deep deep in total effective equipment performance that means the 24/7 based on your, your capital investment, right? So then you are thinking about adding utilization factor. You invested this much of money, so you, you schedule this out of this, this amount of portion, depending on the varying demands and supply. So, so what is your, your total effective equipment performance? Since this utilization, if you take all the time and the production plan time, and this value in Sri Lankan and all, all third world countries, we have about 30% this, this, this deep, that huge space that is still to improve. If you, if you get Germany for, for, for industry 3.0 factory, you may have maximum 75 OEE, overall equipment efficiency. I, have, I went through many factories and their outputs, this overall equipment efficiency, whatever they are scheduled time, plan time, they have about 75%, it's still 25% remaining. And teeth, it's about 60%. This is even developed countries. So there is a there's a gap, there's improvement area that we have to look into that using the technology. So latest technological initiative, if you look into this ISA 95, now also ISA 100, we also have wireless standards. If you look into this, that we are going for the, the smart manufacturing. That means we, we need to we use this like a ecosystem, like in IIoT device, Internet of Things, but industrial perspectives. When it is come to industrial Internet of Things, 
the reliability and the security aspect has to be more concerned and also delay aspect has to be concerned rather than normal IoT devices. So the, we, the machines and system has to come into the intelligent platforms and the real-time connectivity, you have to make the real-time connectivity that is visible all levels, right? So when you have that visibility that the knowledge worker, they will get the, 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 the data on time. For example, if you have a complete process running, if one process is stopped due to a small sensor failure, the total production line has to be stopped for one or two hours until it's repaired. So predictive aspect, predictive maintenance has to be think of, think, and we have to apply these this, this technologies the in front end with the IoT, you are collecting a lot of information, right? It's with the smart devices, based on this information, you can take the decisions at each and every level. So therefore, it is important to collect data and make it that you have to process them based on with the technology and use to the knowledge worker at the right right time and in order to have a, the right, to make the right decisions. So these are the areas that that need to be addressed within the the factory environment. So I will show you the 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 one plant that we have the one mixing. Uh, uh, mixing plant with the cosmeceutical plant that we have uh, basically three, four mixers for the different different material are being mix, mixed, but you have so many sensors, you have level sensors. So based on that, you, you create this actuator that the inflow will be controlled depending on the, on the level sensors that you are getting. And continuously, you are monitoring the, the humidity, temperature and pH levels and based on these, these details fed into the PLC and also all these plant together, you have monitoring at the SCADA systems using, using IP base, uh, base that you can, you can see these functionally from anywhere and you can control them from any, any place. So all in all these informations, this data are very important that you can understand the process functionality and the mixing quality and this has to be monitored continuously. And if there is any 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 damage or breakdown and any any heat exchange, you can immediately at, make the attention on that, and you can control on this. So in order to have this, all the data and information has to be collected, and should be provided to the people who need it in real time, and it should be made available. So when you're going for those processes, it is very important to have. A, normally, we have a schedule in the paperless society when you come into the factory it's it's already there that you you have the the plan you know what to do next it's a real time matrix that we are going with that so the thing is you depending on the data and information you get your machine learning your machine learning and data science uh, this analysis the that make the the format and the information as you required uh, and all these three aspect intelligent and connectivity, and also when you are connecting the, the devices, the messages, this should be open because now we are going for open systems for any, any machine can be connected without any problem. But early days, the vendor looking that so many data silos that one system can be connected, one data process cannot be connected with the other. One vendor specific, if you buy something, you have to buy the same type. So these things has to be open and and with all these together, what we can do is before something happens happen for any process that we have to look for predictive maintenance, that we have to pre-plan. If you have unplanned something happens, that means you have a great loss, your total production lines. And you have to stop all the line. If one machine fails, simultaneously you have to stop all other machines. And this, this is unplanned breakdown is a great, great problem for any systems. So therefore, predictive maintenance is one of the one of the main areas in order to reduce the downtime of particular processes or plant or system that that we can go for the high performance factors. So I will briefly touch on this machine learning area. Machine learning means we acquire knowledge for each and every machine. You can get the temperature values. You can how the motor vibrations and how the motor. Uh, functionality happening, Bas de depending on the variables that you are looking at, you can find the relationships 
for the lifetime and when to change. And you can acquire this knowledge using many machine learning programming, continuously running on edge network. So, so this process together with the, for artificial intelligence, when I look into the, like the factory point of view, it is acquire wisdom, right? You use uh, machine learning and deep learning the processes to acquire the wisdom. That means you find optimum solutions and also you detect any, you know, any anomalies prior to it happens, right? You observe total systems and before any, any, any bad happens for any systems that you make preventive action and you go for preventive measure. So this kind of arrangement, you do something like overall optimum solution with the, with the artificial intelligence. So it uses machine learning to identify each and every process with the variable changes and each and every equipment and the status of those processes. So artificial intelligence can get a complete picture out of it. Now, if you look into this factory environment with the, with the available industry 3.0 stack, we are talking about always this layered based architecture. This is a huge issue because if the layer is talking in between, but the cross, the lower layer will not get certain information that the upper layer is handling, but it, it might be raw material availability. Some part of the process can be, can be expertized and speed up some other part. We can, depending on the variations of supply chain and also the demand, we can, we can schedule the systems, but the, all the workers are not just the dummy workers. We have to have a knowledge workers at the system that can be run. So this is the normal system with the layered architecture, ERP, MES, SCADA system, and, and all other systems, SCM, all systems connected together with the with the, the layered architecture. But what, what we are now going for and better way to do it, each and every systems we have, we have edge systems which collect information and also those edge systems can run their own machine learning, machine learning programs and then they, they can do the data analytics and only the required information can be uploaded into the common space or unified space. This, this can, be a, uh, uh, can be a cloud space, but each and every process centrally connected and this information is shared real time that everyone who need it at the time they need this information. So in order to practically work on this, now the people are more getting to that separate edge systems. They have their data lakes. Within the data lakes, the small data lakes or warehouses that they build this analytical, this analytics with the based on the data you receive and you always give the, the required input to the, the people who need with the, as a knowledge base for the knowledge worker. So the solution to this, this uh, layered architecture, we are, we are coming for unified space and exchanging this information with the, the relevant edge networks. If you want to change any systems, you have to respect to, respect to area has to be modified or you have to give the access. You, of course, you have to have a security point of view. You have to look into these things. And so this way you can have the massive production and real time activity, and you can make this the overall equipment efficiency or deep value up to the 90, 95%. If you take Amazon, it's the one of the biggest retailer, right? So if you order something within, within, within one of maximum five, six hours, they supply within the areas, within, within neighbor cities, because they have, they vastly use the technology, vastly use the, use these, uh, this uh, analytics and also demand forecast depending on the areas also they have and also if you if you take um, the neural link or the car manufacturing uh, tesla they use this industry for concept but the but the main problem of the of the factories in sri lanka or any other factories if they are newly establishing we can go for such a system but if you are if you are 30 years running systems it is very hard to change from one systems to other systems. So in order to this, these changes to dig digitalizations, you have to add up many technologies that they are covering up. So one of the base, base technology that all the, all the sensors has to be make intelligent inter that, that it is connected and it can be give the information for in real time. 
So the cloud computing, you can have these edge spaces as well as the cloud as a unified space. And you also use uh, new technologies like 5G or wireless technologies. The many wireless uh, technologies they are using for this that uh, that with the with the the low power low power and uh, wide area networks. And so you have to think about when the 5G comes into the picture. Also, they are they, it it give a huge impact with this. Then the artificial intelligence, as I, as I expect, these are the old, old technologies. If you want to make a digitalization, this is not the dig digitization, but the digitalization is the process itself has to be changed to the digital. You don't have a schedule. You, 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 you have the, the real time updates when you, when you go to work that you have everything that what you want to do for today and next, next hour. So this kind of real time updates and the information, the format that you required, if you have it in your hand, for example, your hand, your, your mobile phone, you have everything you want. You can connect, you can, you can have your lectures, you can, you can see your family, how they are doing this real-time activity. Similarly, in the, in the factory environment also, you have to have this real-time activity with these new technologies. It is important to have uh, this cybersecurity that because if somebody else control the system, the authentication, authorizations, and all these aspects has to be, still this has to be developed, but these are the major areas. One of the areas is extended reality. This is the augmented reality and uh, augmented reality and, and uh, uh, augmented reality means the physical systems that if you take, if you, if you take a machine, the functionality of this, you, you get the digital information with it. And you can clearly analyze, you can make training, so this, this, this kind of aspect is very, very good to model, to teach learning aspects as well as, as analyze the processes with the real system together. Uh, that you also have a virtual reality that some systems you can observe together and you can give the feeling of that environment. So all these together work, but basically the IIoT and the wireless technology and also data analytics has to be the one of the front front runners for this, but all other technologies should go together. So when you look all this, as I discussed previously, if you take industry 3.0 systems, so you want to change this system to industry 4.0 system. This is not an easy task, as I said, it takes five, two, three years because you have to change people's mindset, right? You have to make a strategy to change this automation of manufacturing processes into the digital integrations, each and every process with the interconnected and real-time information can be used for the knowledge workers for the business process to analyze total system. This kind of strategical movement we call digital transformation. That is required to, for the new factories. This is easy to set up, but the available factories, it take very hard. You have to understand the inventory. You have to understand the, all the processes. You have to start from somewhere, somewhere to, changing all the devices to the IoT devices. You, this total ecosystem has to be changed with changing the IoT devices and real-time accessibility, each and every level up to the business intelligent level, they can see through the system. For example, uh, Jeff Bezos for Amazon, that, that the, the, they, he, he real-time analyzed all his system, he get the, the gross, if you want to see the financial statements, he see online what is changing. With one transaction, if it is changed, that he see the difference. He that you will not wait until one year or six months or you take analysis and see the what is the gross profit and what is the changes of my my liabilities and assets and how the cash flows are going on. This, if you have the late information that you cannot plan. So what you need each and every bill when you are created, each and every, every moment you created, you have to have a financial position to see what is going on, how changes, what is my, my gross value changes. And this has to be done in real time. So in order to have this, you have to have this transformation for industry 3.4 system, automated systems in the, with the layered architecture to the integrated system with the, all the visibility through this, the unified space and data structures with the data analytics data and the making information to the uh, to the required and each and every layers or levels to see in real time is one of the 
major concept of this industry four system. Industry four is kind of movement, but the, this transformation is that we are going for the smart factories. Uh, so when you when you consider why we are why we why do we need this? The main problem is if you want to be competitive in the business, you have to change. You have to understand that you have a problem. You cannot go with the old systems, right? You have to change it. And because the cost and flexibility and demand and, and value propositions to the, your products, to the customers, this has to be addressed. And this, this it, you have to be competitive in the market. So main issues, so not everyone can be helped because so many people have objection on this. And you have to think about, you have to invest your energy into the business and you have to find start the people admitting that they have a problem. So we have to go ahead with this and we have to start it today. So solution is you have to go for it without wasting time and you have to brain, brainstorm with the, with the staff and you have to start, you have to, you have to start from somewhere and develop up to this, the, the, this industry 4.0 to, to start with this, the inventory, you can, you can start with the, the processes, every processes you have to observe and you have to, you have to check the possibilities and you have to start with changing this, this uh, systems with the, with the kind of as a technology transformation, not like a software solution, but the technology transformation as a whole. So, so this has to go with the solution architects. As I discussed previously, you today's we have several factories together. So they have manufacturing factory one, factory two, factory three. When you have online demand that you have to distribute it over the factory in real times because one might be overloaded. So it has to be distributed to the other others. So the raw material process has to be delivered and, and available stocks has to be seen for each and every, every plant together. This has to be done with the unified speed. And you know, to have this, we have to use open architecture to, to have this visibility. Mainly we are using MQTT protocols that run top of TCP. And, and this, this visibility, when we see, we, we see now the virtualization coming into the picture. So 5G total network is service-based network and every and each aspect is it virtualized and the slicing is coming into the picture that your capacity can be given using, using the, 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 the variable capacities. Whatever, whatever you, you consume, you will be paid. So this, this kind of optimizations together, you will have a total factory in a form that, that it can achieve at least 90, 95% OEE level or, or TEEP level about more than 80%. That means you are in, in a very good state. You are competitive in the business and you can have the, the lowest price, the quality products to the customers. All, in the, all the digital factory, what we are looking at, no paper, no paper society. And we always has connected this tech from each and every stage with the, with the visibility. And of course, real-time matrix that you have to process all the all the things in real time and see the see the things with the with the with the visibility and also you predict uh, your total system and before downtime you have to avoid downtime of any equipment or any process or any any shortage of raw material and because real-time matrix means even shipping and also exchange rates you have to have in your fingertips that you know about these systems. And, and you have an idea of what is the changing right now and how we should cater the demands. And because demand is vastly varying because internet demands are coming, orders are happening over the internet, daily it's changing. So benefits is more competitive, increased efficiency, better inventory control and uh, overall automations. If you take digital twins, when you have digitalized system, each and every process you can analyze separately. And every every actual system you can virtually model. You can ex, you can you can you can change with several variable and you can function out how it is happening. So this is like a digital twin. You can put each and every process separately can be analyzed in the virtual environment without affecting to the actual end processes. This is very important that how the performance can be imp uh, improved and how the how the total production line 
can be improved and where our shortcomings and these can be analyzed of course training and and training processes can be done without any 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 safety issues so this kind of when you have the digital factory you have all these facilities and you can go it with this whole analysis that you can have the very good uh, overall equipment performance matrix so i this has a whole uh, uh, i look into this uh, this manufacturing process and what we should do to improve our efficiency uh, the quality availability and the performance and also the utilizations depending on your capital investment so what is the academic initiative that we are looking at early date we have the 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 lecturer is giving the lectures but we have now looked into in different aspects so we should look into the innovation because now knowledge is available everywhere that the student can acquire this so we have to use the innovation based education systems the skill and competencies of the students has to be has to be brushed up that means you have to give the projects and you have to do the activities to the students and they can gather the knowledge over the over the you have the knowledge in your fingertips you have you can get the knowledge so these competencies mean the kind of when you have your skills you have to make formulation of some some kind of ability to make something new so this has to be think and and one other aspect is the communication among the groups has to be made because creativity and also critical thinking together with the collaboration is required for the today's education uh, platforms the basic uh, basic learning platforms is has to be done at the initially but the, at the later stage we have to develop these skills how the communication and creativity and critical thinking aspects we can develop all in all this what i was planning to to give a brief overview but i i was thinking about to give it for the master thesis students but anyway but i i think everybody get some idea about how overall picture is look like because i want to give this idea to you if you have any questions we can dis discuss okay yeah. Okay, so thank you very much to Charles to share all these first hand insights about factory and the communication and data processing infrastructure with us. So, yeah, then I would like to open the stage for the questions and discussion. So, please, all the audience, if you have any questions, then go ahead asking your questions. Yeah, if there's silence, then I would yeah. ask the first yeah. question. Yeah. So, uh, when we now combine uh, industry with academia, when we put this link, so what would you see as research challenges in this field of industry 4.0, in particular related to communication networks? That means now you have first hand experience, you have deployed your equipment in the factory. There you also have, I guess you have identified shortcomings, that means with the equipment that is nowadays uh, available off the shelf. So what would you see as possible research aspects that we in the university could, uh, where we could be innovative to improve uh, the things, so to improve the uh, quality of the factories? Actually, the the industry as well. When I when I work with the industry people, also I see that uh, the, I, I will coming from the industry to the education to answer your question. So what I saw that the people always good at something at their layers, right? Layers wise. When I go with talking to the PLC engineers, PLC engineers they are perfect for the PLC. They do hundred percent. But the SCADA level and the MES level, they are good at their level. But what I see main problem with the industry, they are not cooperative with one layer to the other layer and one process, one plans, one, one process to the other process. They are not collaborative. They are not working together. This is the main issue that for the total productivity and as a CEO, as a company manager, if you look into that, this is a big trouble. People attitude that they do their part, they do their areas, they, they are genius about that. They, we cannot tell anything about that area. But the, together, when we have the total process, when you have a, from input supply to the finished product, this is a complete process. 
if any way I just stop, any way something happens, if this collaboration, we don't get the output, we don't get the final output. You are good at something, but you this overall picture, we have to make it. I see this problem in the education as well. We are looking into one particular sector and they are good at there, but there are so many other areas that we are lagging. So the, the, that's what happened this industry 4.0 as well. They are promising from 2012, 2013 to today, but it's not moving that far, fast, but some areas people are very good. Some areas people are very bad. So what we want to have is this collaborative research with the different areas as a complete platform. They have to think, critically think together. And based on that, these all processes, all the systems, they have to work together. That 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 collaboration, collaborative projects with the several uh, several areas together has to be done. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, uh, this will not be successful. For from my point of view, I have seen this many areas that the people very good at one area, but if one other areas are missing, that the total output we don't we don't get. That is the problem at the moment we have for the competitiveness. You have to have everybody together work at one force as a factory. In the factory, there's a huge amount of field. One is warehouse management. The other one, is, all these areas together has to be functional. For example, that if we, if we sell some, some farm, some tablet or something, if something has happened in the market, that has to be traced back up to the final supplier raw materials. Thus, this integrated system that, that, that has to be identified. So my my main focus is that we have to do more project work with the collaborations, with uh, with thinking about all the perspective. At least some areas to be together to be covered. So that means you are talking on behalf of interdisciplinary working. That also in the academic level, uh, different departments should work together because uh, you have to merge these different disciplines. Right? That's what you want to say. Right? Yeah. Yes, for your language, cross layer functions you must should be there. Yeah, I understand. So uh, okay, this is more what what, what we, you have now discussed is more on a managerial operational level. So now when we go more to the technological level, that means uh, when we talk about uh, data com communication and data processing, uh, though the technologies that are nowadays available. So which shortcomings do you identify there? So what could be done? Uh, what could we do improve there in, in terms of researching what what have you found? So there's all this IoT device producing huge amount of data. So the, that data for, from the device itself should be filtered and required data should be put into the common edge networks. And that has to be analyzed continuously with different ma machine learning algorithms. And that those will provide to the, the these those should be provided to the people that is within that. For example, communication, if you take, if you put everything into the cloud and communication might be a little bit tedious, but you have to utilize within the, within the area. For example, if you are living in, 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 in shop flow, for example, factory flow, that you have to use, utilize your function within that flow as much as, but only the required information outside to the main that to the pass to the main unified space has to be pushed there, but all locally should be processed maximum possible. Therefore, so many communication hurdles we can remove with that. So it should be decentralized, but but it's, but the group wise uh, decentralized with the optimum performance. You can use this with the for machine learning to so each and every level. You can understand the performance of that level. And only the required information has to be shared among the others. And this, not the data, but the information has to be shared at the people who need at the right time and right places and the required information only. But big, big problem at the moment is the security holes, security issues with this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Understand. That means what you are arguing for is that uh, in the central, in the centralized approach, it's only the information that you collect and process. That means the data, the raw data, the measurement values, this is all processed locally, and then you bring it together, right? Uh, 
Yes, but depending on the processes that, that we cannot uh, say exactly, but depending on the factory and depending on the system, depending on the process that you are running, that you have to share the information. What I mean is, if the, the information has to be shared within the locally, has to be optimum utilized within the locally, and it has to be processed and used locally, that what exactly happened today, everything put it to the cloud or somewhere in the space, and they try to do all the machine learning, all the, these late data lakes, huge data lakes they have on the, on the, on the cloud platform or unified space in the one place, but the, the localized information is not utilized in locally and it has to be processed locally, but the only the required information to the layers has to be updated. For example, PLC informations, only few machine status information has to be sent to the next layer, but you don't need all other information to be, it has to be utilized within the, within the, within the entity, within the shop flow and within that database. But of course, all the machine learning and data analytics and functionality has to be run within that local systems. So this, what this within the system, if you effectively use the information, that we received and we can avoid uh, many failures within the within the areas and also in between shareable information has to be shared and shareable machine learning and analytics has to be put into the unified space as well so it is depend on totally the that your design your your architectural design your architect technological uh, architecture but what i mean is locally information should not be transferred to anywhere has to be locally utilized as maximum as that. That's why it is actually this delay process is happening. I feel that that industry 4.0 is move. The new factories, of course, you can go with very fastly, but old factory changing, it will take five, six years that uh, changing everything. Yeah. Another aspect that I noticed was this open interfaces. So you said that the equipment that is available nowadays is lacking open interfaces. So it's difficult to connect the items right did i get that correctly yes because early that if you see the previous siemens if you take siemens siemens scar system plc everything has to be you have to take every connector every data communication every ethernet connector with the same same one but we cannot go it like this the information has to be for any device once you connected just connected uh, intelligent device can be connected without any any problem so once you connected it should be this data silos, the communication transport silo should not be there. It should be open structure like 5G because it's totally now getting open and you have also the effective sharing as well. So we have to go for this open architecture. I feel no alternative for that for, for all the system has to be integrated. I physically faces this problem because I want to buy different machines and I see the performance are different. But I had the compatibility issues because I did I did not buy the latest one because it's very costly, the total system. But some of the critical machineries, I, I got it very good, high quality, but but the some of the not critical machineries, because, because depending on my budget plan, I go for that. So therefore, I had this problem, the connecting them together with the PLCs and SCADA systems is a uh, Huge mess, huge problem, right? This is still there, still there. But we have to go for open system. No, to do that for our factory, we are, we are going for new ones. But our problem is we didn't have the full capital to deploy for all the processes with the very high quality. So therefore you have to have, as a CEO, you have to do some compromises. So you have to check, okay, what are the critical entities we have to take from the very good quality? And the other we can take from, from India or China, but the main other processes we, we took from uh, Europe, so main parts. So this compatibility issue still there, still there, and it is a problem. Other questions from the audience? Okay, just one last question from uh, just to wind up also. Uh, Tushar, so you, you, I was thinking more in terms of what would are there any opportunities for us and you guys to collaborate in something in in this particular area or whatever because I, I I sort of assume that you have also taken some of this stuff to your uh, uh, teaching and and you know I, I I get the feeling that you have done that so is there any any sort of 
possibilities of collab because you you know the expertise that we have here so is there any sort of thing that you have that we could uh, sort of collaborate in the future yes actually we what we can do is we can make some because this iot area is a is a vast area you have this arduino and raspberry pi and this 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 all the sensors we can develop and those sensors now our engineering people they are not looking at this data analytics part as well we have to somehow these have to, we have to have a combined i am in the computer faculty and we have also engineering i just just take one example in for our areas i am in computing faculty and and, and engineering faculty i am lucky to get this computing faculty till i i applied for the professorship and i have to wait for the results and one year I am in now computing faculty, I am very lucky to have this because I see all the people, how they are working and what are the students doing their research and what area they, they are going for this data analytics and all the programming languages. They look, they, they are really good doing very well. But I see from them that if I engineering students can collaborate with these groups and I want to make that, now I have 30 groups in, 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 in 30 groups I'm handling with the research. With, uh, with basically for the cybersecurity and also this data analytics area, the machine learning areas. But I want to collaborate these students, at least with our engineering faculty, engineering students. They are also, they have mechanical and all other disciplines, but very effectively we can combine these projects and make one project. What we can, if we can do such things, we can, we can make a marketable product because industry needs such collaborations that, that that's currently I'm not, not going to the factory because um, the, the, now I totally in the academic because I, I let the people handle it. But what I see from the industry point of view, this collaborative platform can generate very good, efficient combined output. And such a, such a research, if we can do together because you are, you are good at wireless and sensor networks and all this. And, and then we can have kind of collaborative projects I will think about this and uh, in, in future, and uh, we can do some kind of collaborative work, which really can be implemented in, in the industry. But if you take our factory that we had the problem with, we have this mixing plants, right? The, what, that independent, they are controlled by PLCs, but we have several plants together. So then the, the, these information, we are not analyzing it. We are not, have, have, we don't have that intelligent, all the processes and even suppliers varying supplier, when you order something, their variation has to be taken into account that you, you when you are design, deciding that, that schedules to cater the demand that you have to think about all supplier, what are the delays that occurring and all these things together, we have to make. Similarly for the research platform, we can do together some kind of collaborative research which wireless plus some kind of activity we can do with at the moment we can do with the, this data analytics part with there are good students with us and also i want to combine engineering platforms as well for this this is my future ideas to 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 go ahead with that and the cyber security area also one of the areas that i also look into that because there are so many issues with the security aspects of uh, the data handling if you get into one system, you can go into all other systems. Actually, there are no security that much inside, but industrial, uh, somehow they are covered, but our total academic areas, we can see if you break one system, you can go all the other systems as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Maybe maybe just the last note from me. Um, I got especially caught somehow by your predictive maintenance. Uh, that's that found really interesting because this is something which we can also use a lot in our IoT applications. Like you probably know from Andreas or from Asanga that we are quite active now already in the uh, well already we're quite active in the IoT domain, especially in agricultural scenarios, environmental monitoring scenarios, smart cities, and so on. So it's not really an industrial setting. Pollution, yes, pollution. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And their predictive maintenance sounds like a great idea to me. Um, so maybe we can go define some student projects together, which we can co-supervise. That will be of high interest also for us. 
Uh, yeah, that's actually a very good area. The predictive maintenance, we can look into those uh, environmental aspects basically yeah. as well for the and we can we can discuss on this and we can find some students uh, in this area and we can work together. Yeah, yeah, that could be that would be very interesting. Yes, and also all our students also now that at the at the very beginning that the second year we are giving all the programming knocks. That means uh, the Python and Java and all these uh, we we do at the very beginning now. Now we shifted it down that they can really do the project effectively. That they have the, the when they are going to industry they have good uh, the understanding about this programming even R and all this uh, they have good analytics as well when they come to third third and fourth years so we shifted it down because the student need to do more work in front end and learning other aspect they can do so many project works we also included included uh, so second year project third year project and the final year project continuously flowing. So that they have a continuous understanding because first, second year, we are also giving research part, they how to read the papers and how to extract information, how to how this this will be given at the very beginning, and then we we progress into the the independent projects and then the, the group projects and the total uh, final year projects. So we will be able to do even master students we have. And uh, we will try to collaborate in this predictive maintenance area for environmental, as you said, all other areas, we can look into that and how we can predict the things before it happening. So this analysis we can do. Okay, great. Okay, very yeah, good to have, yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah thank, thank you. you. So yeah. you're welcome. Thank you, Sharon. So thank you very much for your time. To and following our invitation to come to us today and have your very interesting talk. Yeah, and as we have seen, there will be a lot of follow up discussions, which is anyway in the tradition. We are connected to KU, we have a lot of corporations in the several years. So that means then there are a lot of very interesting uh, topics to follow. Yeah, thank you very much to Sharon again. And uh, yeah, then we will then again, we will continue the discussions then in the following weeks and months and so forth. Yeah, for the audience, that's, that concludes today's presentation. That means we have, that means we have one external speaker today, so which we now have first. Uh, that's all for today. So I thank all the audience for their time and attendance. And then uh, see you next week. Thank you very much for attending and goodbye. <laughs>